They had started the whole concept of movies for television. You know, when television came in at its inception, all the moguls ran screaming. This is going to destroy feature films. This is truly, uh, this is our, our Holocaust here in Hollywood, my lord. Lou Wasson was the only mogul who said, hey, boys, it's going to be a cash cow. We will make movies and series for this all devouring monster. And he was right. The man was a visionary, not only there, but in many other areas of the business. And he was right. And uh, they started movies for television. I think Jennings Lang was in there too. Jennings Lang started the long form in television, you know, four hours instead of, you know, two or one. And no, this is just going to be a one shot. We had still no idea how popular Columbo could be. And the stage play was very interesting. At the end, when they would take their bows, the star was Joe Cotton. It was a big movie star. Thomas Mitchell was a character actor, a very fine actor, but, but a character, second banana. When they came out, Mitchell would get all the applause. And then out came the star, and the applause level would drop. And Dick and I said, you know, there's something about that cop character. But then, you know, we were, uh, you know, so impressed with Thomas Mitchell, who was a wonderful actor, and played it with his own quirky ways, different. He played it like an Irish leprechaun, an old Irish leprechaun, it's totally unlike what Peter uh, does with the character. But we said, you know, I don't, that's. That's an interesting character. But still, when we did we adapted it uh, for the two-hour world premiere, we, we still didn't know. Then it was on, it was the number one show that week in the Nielsen's. And NBC immediately said, oh, has to be a series. Do 22 of these a year, and Peter Falk said, no, 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 no. Because he'd had a bad experience with a series, um, which I thought was a pretty good series, called Trials of O'Brien. And uh, what I think happened was it, it sort of disrupted Peter's lifestyle. He wanted to do feature pictures. That was re really his goal. And, you know, he had his own Rat Pack. He was hanging out with John Cassavetes. They're all good friends in Ben Gazzara. And if he got locked into a series again, he had no time, practically no time to see his family and no time for his extracurricular activities. He, he's a big golfer. He loves golf. And uh, he said no. But then, a couple years later, Herb Schlosser, who was at NBC out here, and was a friend of, of Dick and mine, and he's still a friend of mine to this day, a wonderful man, uh, he said, you know, that cop haunts me. Let's do another two hour with that cop. So he won't do it as a series, so what? Well, again, then we did. We didn't write the teleplay. We wrote the story. It was called Ransom for a Dead Man. With Peter Falk and Lee Grant, she played a brilliant lawyer who supposedly commits the perfect crime. Again, number one in the Nielsen's. Then Universal came up with The Wheel. That was a rotating uh, series of four different series. One would be on one week, followed by a second, third, and fourth, and then you'd be back to the, the first series again. So Falk could do six or seven of those a year, they're hour and a half shows. And then he had the whole rest of the year. He could do those in five, six months. He'd have another six months to pursue his, uh, his movie career. So, um, never forget the day we're in Sid Scheinberg's office. He was the president of Universal Television. And um, he said, it's a go. He said, we have no scripts or anything. And uh, he said, well, you got to get them all this summer. You got to shoot them all this summer. Falk had given Universal a stop date because he had to go to New Haven uh, to Mike Nichols. He was going to do Neil Simon's play, um, Prisoner of Second Avenue. So we had, to do, we had to do six hour and a half Columbos from scratch in five and a half months. It was the worst summer I ever experienced because uh, we were producing them too. We produced before then My Sweet Charlie. That was our first outing. Uh, it was a very successful movie for television with Patty Duke. And she won the Emmy. We won for uh, uh, 
best teleplay. And so we had gotten our feet really wet on that one because uh, it was all filmed, not even at Universal, it was filmed on the Gulf Coast. And, uh, I mean, we were thrown into the, uh, the deep part of the pool our first time out. But Scheinberg did that on purpose because he wanted us to produce. I always had a problem with Dick. Dick did not want to produce. That was a problem in the career. But we knew we'd solve it. So I had to talk him into it, which was tough because Dick was a very stubborn guy. And but I said, look, this is buy an insurance, buying an insurance policy on our work. We can't just write a script and the director comes in and says, this script is about my second marriage. And we're there, not about your second marriage. It's got nothing to do with your second marriage. How dare you say that? You know, we were putting up with stuff like that. But if we were producers, we'd bring in a director who was amenable, who wasn't even married twice and wasn't finding these strange, arcane things, you know, in, in, our, in our material. So we, we became producers to protect our scripts. That was the basis for it. Then we found out, you were mentioning about producing before, then we found out it, it was an extension of our writing. You could write by selecting the right director and working with him and letting him know the way you saw the picture. You could work with the screen composer, the kind of music you wanted or you didn't want. You could work with, we would select the furniture. I remember on Columbo, the first season. Uh, you could change props. You're into all these areas. We'd be in the editing room, making sequences better, sharpening them, sometimes lengthening them, getting the pauses right, the silences. We saw it as an extension of our writing. Um, which to me is the major thing about a hands-on producer. I think many producers now don't even get into all those niceties. We dubbed every one of our pictures, Dick and I. We did the color corrections with the, uh, with the uh, director of photography. We were in every single aspect of what we did, and we hoped that that would show on the screen. So um, we found out once we were producers, we started just as, you know, to protect our scripts. We found out being a producer, you could give so much more to enhance and to make real your vision of that script.